Hey everybody, welcome back to part 18 of our tutorial series. And in this video, we're going to do some collision detection. So right now we've got three trees on the screen. I'm going to take it back down to one. Um, and we're going to add some collision detection. So first thing that I want to do is I want to reset the bounds because the bounds on the tree is not correct. So let's get that in place so that once we get the collision detection working, it's actually working uh, and looking good. So let's go into the statics and to our tree. Let's change these numbers. I think that 45 here and 135 there. And then we will change this to 60 by uh, 5 for the height. This, I think, looks a little bit better. Um, and we will see as we move on. So I'm going to close it down the tree again. And first thing we're going to do is go into the world... Uh, class and let's add to our getters uh, get entity manager that's gonna be a function and it's just gonna return this dot entity manager this way we can access it from other classes next thing that I want to do is <clears throat> uh, in the JavaScript in Java or sorry in Java um, they, with a rectangle class, there is an intersect um, function. And what I'm going to do is add our own intersect function to our rectangle class. So the first thing to do is come here. And we'll say, actually, let's put it right in here. Intersects, intersects. And that's going to be a function, and it's going to take in a rectangle. And this is generic uh, collision detection or overlapping detection for rec two rectangles. So what we're going to say is we're going to say if this dot x is less than the past in rectangles x plus the past in rectangles uh, width. And, and there's going to be a lot of ands here, and uh, let's put these together. This dot x plus this dot width is greater than rect the past in rectangles x. And this dot y is less than the past in rectangles y plus the past in rectangles height and this dot height is oh, plus this dot y is greater than rect passing rectangle y and then we will turn true else return false. So what this is saying and we can actually reverse these just to make it look a little bit more uniform. What it's basically saying is if the two are overlapping. So that's what all of these ifs, uh, all of these conditionals are. Oops, and this uh, x right here. And if they are overlapping, so if the squares are intersecting, it will return true, um, else it will just return false. So now that that's done, um, we can move on to our entity, um, entity class. We're going to be adding some functions in here. And these functions are actually going to be what checks uh, for collisions. So we will come up above these. We'll come right here. And we'll say uh, get collision bounds. And this is going to be a function. And it's going to take an x offset and a y offset. 
And the reason for this is so that we can uh, get collision, um, get the collision bounds. Um, essentially, this will be what helps us get the collision of uh, of the entity where the bounding box is going to be. So we can do a preliminary check before moving our character to check to see if he will collide in the next uh, tick. And if not, then we can proceed and move him. Uh, if he does, then we won't move him at all, and he'll stay where he is, causing uh, causing it to uh, essentially, um, you know, show a collision and show that he doesn't move through a tree. You'll see as we go through. So with this, we're just going to return a new rectangle. We're going to parse these variables as integers. This dot x plus this dot bounds dot x plus that pass in offset, so x offset. And we'll also do uh, right here, we will do parse integer in this dot y plus this dot bounds dot y plus y offset. And then we will just use this dot bounds dot width and this dot bounds dot height. So what this is doing is returning a new rectangle um, in the position uh, wherever the wherever we want the collision bounds to be on the screen. So the x offset and y offset will come in handy soon. So now we will actually check entity collisions. So this function will loop through all of the candidates for collision. And I say candidates because eventually we will not be looping through every single entity on the screen, but yet only entities that are candidates for collision. And you'll see how that works, oops, function, um, in a future tutorial, maybe even the next tutorial, where I'm going to go over a spatial grid um, and how we can limit the number of collision checks um, and optimize for performance. Because in my, my hopes for this tutorial series is we make a game that has quite a few entities on the screen at once um, and we'll have a lot of cool functions and um, things that we use in our game. All right, so in here we'll set candidates equal to this dot handler dot get world dot get entity manager oops entity manager dot get entities. So this is getting us our entities. Now I can do a for loop for var i is equal to zero. i is less than candidates dot length i plus plus. And inside of here, we're going to set a variable e equal to candidates at index of i. And first check we will do is say if e is not equal to this, because we don't want to check a collision on the character that we are. So the the list includes the uh, includes every entity, even the one that's making the collision check. So if we make the collision check on ourselves, we'll always be colliding and therefore it would cause a lot of problems. So the first thing is to make sure we're not checking ourselves. The next thing to do is to say if E, referring to the whichever candidate we're talking about currently in the for loop, dot get collision bounds and we're just going to pass in 0, 0 for the offset. And then we can say dot intersects. And we'll pass in this dot get collision bounds. And then we will pass in x offset and y offset. And if this is true, we're going to return true else return false. So what this is doing is it's looping through every candidate and it is running the intersects on that candidate at its position. So there's zero offset for that. So it's basically just getting wherever that, that care, uh, entity is on the screen and whether it intersects with this entity at the offset that we're putting in. 
So you'll see when we come into the creatures class where we actually put that offset in. So if we come to creatures, we go up to the X move, we're actually going to run our collision check um, before we move our our uh, before we move our player. So we can come here and we can say if this dot check entity collisions and then we'll say this dot x move and then zero for the y so what this means is if we are not colliding with an entity at the position that we're about to be in so before we actually update we're going to check to see if that new position on the x will collide with another entity if it doesn't then we can move on the x and then the same thing for y this dot check entity collision this and then we put zero here and this dot y move here oops and what this is checking is the same thing but on the y so like code more says this is not the most efficient way to do collision detection but it uh it gets the job done for now so i believe with this being done the way that we have it now I'm going to go into our world and remove all these trees except for one let's see what we've got going on now and get entities is not defined let's see Get entities line fifty. Get world dot get entities. Uh, it looks like we've got get entities here. Uh, get entity manager. Let's make sure we have that in our world get entity manager oh we need to return not just put in entity manager there all right so let's see what happens now so we come down here come to the tree and we cannot pass through it there we go and the collision bounding box is pretty decent it's not perfect but that's good enough for a game that we're the game style that we're making right now so this is collision detection and no matter how many entities we have on the screen so if I come up here and we duplicate this and have one at let's say 300 come over here it's going to run that for all of the entities so we've got collision detection working we've got layer sorting so it is based on the Y position whether it's rendered in front or behind and it is looking pretty decent so I'm going to call this video done and in the next tutorial maybe we'll go over a spatial grid now that may take a little bit of time to explain but I think in the end um, in the end it will be beneficial especially with the type of game that I'm thinking we're gonna go with so I will see you guys in the next tutorial where hopefully we optimize this so that we can have tons of entities on the screen without any lag I'll see you guys there